Welcome to our in-depth look at the behind-the-scenes stories from the recording of Guns N' Roses' iconic album, Appetite for Destruction. Released in 1987, this debut album has sold over 30 million copies worldwide, cementing the band's place in rock history. But the journey to creating this masterpiece was anything but smooth. Join us as we uncover the stories, struggles, and triumphs that shaped this legendary album. The story of Appetite for Destruction begins in the gritty streets of Los Angeles. Guns N' Roses was formed in 1985, and by 1986, they were ready to record their debut album. The band members, Axl Rose, Slash, Izzy Stradlin, Duff McKagan, and Steven Adler, were a wild and unpredictable bunch, but their chemistry was undeniable. Slash, the band's lead guitarist, has often shared his memories of the early days. In his autobiography, he describes the raw energy and chaos that surrounded the band. We were living on the edge, playing shows and partying hard. But we knew we had something special. The band lived in squalor, often rehearsing in a cramped, cockroach-infested apartment they called the Hell House. The recording sessions for Appetite for Destruction were held at Rumble Recorders in Los Angeles. The band was working with producer Mike Klink, known for his meticulous attention to detail. Klink was a perfect match for the band, balancing their raw energy with his polished production style. Klink had previously worked with Heart and Triumph, and his technical expertise was crucial in capturing the band's live sound. Duff McKagan, the bassist, reminisced about the initial recordings. Mike Klink was a genius. He knew how to capture our live sound in the studio. We recorded the basic tracks live, just the way we played them on stage. This approach was essential to maintaining the raw and aggressive feel of their music. The band faced numerous challenges during the recording process. Financial constraints forced them to be resourceful. They often had to scrounge for food and shelter, relying on friends and fans for support. Despite these hardships, the band remained focused on their goal. Another significant challenge was the band's notorious lifestyle. Their heavy drinking and drug use often led to conflicts and delays. Slash has admitted in various interviews that the band was out of control during the recording sessions, which made it difficult to maintain a steady workflow. One of the first songs recorded was Welcome to the Jungle. Axel Rose had written the lyrics based on his first impressions of Los Angeles, a city that was both exhilarating and terrifying. The opening riff, created by Slash, has become one of the most recognizable in rock history. Slash described the moment he came up with the riff in an interview. I was just messing around with my guitar, and that riff just came out. I knew it was something special. Axel heard it and immediately started coming up with lyrics. The song captures the band's dangerous allure and the dark side of their experiences in the city. Welcome to the Jungle was recorded in just one take. Mike Klink was impressed with the band's raw energy and decided to keep the first take. This decision paid off, as the song became one of the album's standout tracks. Axel Rose's vocals were another critical element of the album. Known for his wide vocal range and powerful delivery, Axel pushed himself to the limit during the recording sessions. Producer Mike Klink recounted how Axel would often spend hours perfecting his vocal tracks. Axel was a perfectionist. He would do take after take until he got it just right. However, the recording process wasn't without its challenges. The band's notorious lifestyle often led to delays and conflicts. Drummer Steven Adler's struggle with substance abuse, in particular, caused significant issues. Adler's partying often affected his performance, leading to tensions within the band. One lesser-known story involves the recording of Rocket Queen. Steven Adler's drumming was so inconsistent that Mike Klink had to splice together multiple takes to create a single coherent drum track. Steven was a great drummer, but his lifestyle was catching up with him. Paradise City is a song that captures the essence of Guns N' Roses. The song was written collaboratively by the band during a road trip. Slash revealed in his autobiography that the famous chorus, Take Me Down to the Paradise City, was inspired by their longing for a place where they could escape the chaos of their lives. 
The band's songwriting process was often spontaneous and collaborative. We wrote Paradise City in the back of a van on our way back from a gig. Axel came up with the chorus, and we all started jamming along. It just came together naturally. Izzy Stradlin, the rhythm guitarist, contributed significantly to the songwriting process. His experiences and observations often translated into gritty, real-life lyrics. Songs like Mr. Brownstone were reflections of the band's struggles with addiction. In an interview, Stradlin shared, we wrote about what we knew, our lives, our experiences. Mr. Brownstone was our story. As the recording progressed, the band's vision for the album became clearer. They wanted to create something raw and authentic, a reflection of their lives and the world around them. Mike Klink's production techniques played a crucial role in achieving this sound. He used minimal overdubs and focused on capturing the band's live energy. One of the standout tracks on the album is Sweet Child of Mine. The song, with its unforgettable guitar riff and heartfelt lyrics, became a massive hit. Slash admitted that the riff started as a warm-up exercise. I was just fooling around with this riff, and Axel loved it. He started writing lyrics, and before we knew it, we had Sweet Child of Mine. The song's success took the band by surprise. It topped the charts and became one of the defining songs of the 1980s. Axel Rose later revealed that the lyrics were inspired by his then-girlfriend, Erin Everly. It's a love song. It's about a girl who was very special to me. Despite the band's rough exterior, moments of vulnerability and genuine emotion shine through in their music. This contrast is part of what made Appetite for Destruction so powerful. It wasn't just about the hard rock lifestyle, it was also about the band's personal struggles and triumphs. As the album neared completion, the band faced another challenge, finding a cover that matched their vision. The original artwork, featuring a robot rapist, was deemed too controversial. The band eventually settled on the now iconic Cross and Skulls design by artist Billy White Jr. Each skull represents a band member, symbolizing their unity and individuality. The cover art controversy is a lesser known part of the album's history. Geffen Records, the band's label, insisted on changing the original artwork after major retailers refused to stock the album. This decision proved to be wise, as the revised cover became one of rock's most iconic images. The band also faced challenges with the mixing and mastering of the album. Mike Klink worked closely with Steve Thompson and Michael Barbiero to achieve the perfect sound. The team spent weeks fine-tuning the mixes, ensuring that every detail was captured. Appetite for Destruction was released on July 21, 1987. Initially, it received little attention, but word of mouth and relentless touring helped the album gain momentum. By the end of 1987, it was climbing the charts, and in 1988, it reached number one on the Billboard 200. The band's live performances played a significant role in their rise to fame. Their raw energy and undeniable talent won over audiences night after night. Slash recalled the band's relentless touring schedule in his autobiography. We played every show like it was our last. We gave everything we had on stage. The success of Appetite for Destruction was a turning point for Guns N' Roses. They went from being a struggling band in Los Angeles to international rock stars. But with success came new challenges, and the band's notorious lifestyle continued to make headlines. Despite the chaos, the legacy of Appetite for Destruction endures. The album's raw energy, honest lyrics, and groundbreaking sound have inspired countless musicians and fans. Thank you for joining us on this journey behind the scenes of Guns N' Roses' debut album. We hope you've enjoyed these stories and gained a deeper appreciation for this classic record. Stay tuned for more insights into the making of rock's greatest albums. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content.